How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Pim. Um, I am the product manager for MapSwipe. And one thing you might not know about me is that I actually also founded an app some of you may have heard about, um, which is actually a, um, <laughs> it's really funny. It's, um, it's an app called Pokematch. It's a matching app for Pokemon Go. So I'm just getting that out there. Um, it's ridiculous, but that's what I did. Um, so my name is Pim. I am the, the tech lead on MapSwipe and product manager also. Uh, I work on as part of the Missing Maps project. And I was so depressed on the way here because of the rain this morning. Instead of putting together a presentation, I decided to put together 50 minutes full of CAD videos. And I mean, you guys can either just stick with me or just enjoy these. Um, OK, in all seriousness, uh, MapSwipe. So MapSwipe is mo offline mobile mapping for everyone. Can I just get a hands for everybody here that's either heard of MapSwipe or is using it right now? Nice. Thank you. So MapSwipe was founded, as Selena mentioned, as a way to help contribute to map the approximately a billion unmapped people in this world. Um, we're not quite there yet, as you can imagine, but the missing maps is um, it's set forth a really big goal to, to achieve this, and I'm happy to be part of that. So um, this is the app we created, and it basically allows people to contribute to uh, maps from their mobile phone. And if you guys haven't downloaded it yet, you can download it from the App Store and the Play Store pretty much anywhere in the world. This is what it looks like. And so as you can see, you organizations can upload their projects, which is a, uh, in the form of a KML file. That project then gets distributed to the thousands and thousands of users that use MapSwipe every day. And map swipers can then map those projects on their mobile phones by classifying tiles um, by swiping through imagery. We've only been out for two months, but these are our numbers today. Um, at this point, we process about 150,000 contributions every single day. We have about 10,000 mappers that are active and mapping with us every single day. Um, and we have only been out for two months, and to this date, we have 6.5 million contributions to MapSwipe Maps. And to give you guys an idea, this is what it looks like. Um, we basically distribute a task, and this is Myanmar. The cyan blue color is positive results for maps and houses. The red is bad imagery, and the little yellow stripes is people who said they maybe saw something there. This was done in... Um, in a request for, uh, by MSF for the Myanmar task. And maps why I put this together in 48 hours. And as a result, you, have now, you, have, you now have a base map that people can start mapping from where before there was nothing. So this was 48 hours, which is a really big improvement over how fast maps are generated today. And to give you guys a little bit better of an idea, that was approximately 400,000 tiles. And every single tile was seen by at least one person three times. So, it's, it's verified by, by three people, basically. Uh, how MapSwipe works on sort of a technical level is um, we take in this, this area of interest as a KML file. Then we have a geogrouping algorithm that basically runs through that area and turns those tiles into areas that people can put offline on their mobile phones. So as you can see here, this is, um, I don't remember which country it is, because uh, it's about two months ago when we built it. But uh, basically, it, turns, it, it takes an area, then it cuts it up into those little pieces. As you can see on the right, those are the groups. And then we distribute those groups to people to see on their mobile phones, and they can simply swipe, swipe through it um, in order to classify the tiles. And every single X that you see there is actually a tile, and is actually considered a task in the map swipe system. And as you can see, so map swipe basically keeps track of these groups, and then it distributes them down uh, to each user. And so, for example, user 1 can get group 12, user 2 can get group 13, or sorry, yeah, group 13, and user 14 can get, um, user 3 can get group 14, et cetera. And then a general task consists of roughly 2,000 plus groups of tiles that people um, get on their phones. And as I mentioned, it works offline. So you can download the maps offline by yourself. So if you have a commute to work, you can simply download a task, and then you can spend an hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes to simply map it on your phone. Um, so you can download it offline and do it while you're in your commute. And here's what the community is saying about MapSwipe. Um, it's a vast improvement over 
what there currently is. It's sort of the next level of usability in mapping. And our vision for this platform is to really become the mobile mapper um, of the future and to be able to create maps by simply distributing tasks to people that can contrib contribute to it from their mobile phones instead of actually from their laptops or from a computer. So um, people are using it in education to teach their students about, uh, about mapping, which I thought was a really cool example of how this is really the next level of usability in mapping. Um, people use it in between their daily tasks. So some people, this, this guy David Ross decided to use it in between talks. Other people um, do it at their you know, lunch break. And that's really what makes this cool, is that MapSwipe allows you to do it whenever you have five minutes free, you can contribute to MapSwipe. And there are a number of really cool examples of, of how people use it. And part of the reason why it works is because mobile has systems that allow you to notify people of when new maps become available, for example. And so we can keep people coming back to the app, whereas if you, are, if you have a website, that's really tough, because there's not always an incentive to go to a website and, and, and do the work um, without, you know, having, you have to spend a couple seconds to, you know, 30 minutes to figure out what to do and how to jump into it. And with MapSwipe, it's instant. You download the app. You go through a quick, you know, 30-second tutorial on how to do it, and you're set. And so people scan different um, amounts of area. But this guy in particular uh, figured out to um, do 200 square kilometers last week while sitting on his couch, which is something that is not really heard of before. Um, so part of what makes it work is that it's, my, my background, as you heard, probably is in gaming. Um, I, I used to build computer games, um, and still do to this day, and mobile games. And we sort of took those techniques and put them into MapSwipe, uh, which is part of you know, retention, getting people to come back to the app, systems. Um, this is engagement, where you basically swipe through and you get little nice messages that, that motiva motivate you along the way that encourages people to finish the tasks they're currently working on. And people earn those badges. As you can see, um, there's 36 different badges in the app that you can earn by, by swiping more and more. And that basically keeps people coming back every day to map um, more. And this is roughly what it looks like. So you swipe through the area. Then if you tab once, it says it's a positive result. So yes, which is when you see something, in this case, a house or a road. If you do it twice, it's a maybe, which means that we'll go check and see if it's actually something. If you, if you tap three times, it will um, classify it as bad imagery, which means that we have to either report it to our imagery provider that we need new imagery for that area. And um, so how it works is like this. And I should mention that so MapSwipe was developed as part of the Missing Maps project, and it was funded by Dr. Style Borders, um, which is who we collaborated with to actually build this. Um, and so here's how the current sort of micromappers approach works. So first you have an area of interest and the person generates a task and has to propose why it's actually important. And then it goes into a um, stage of, of crowdsourcing, which is sometimes done through a uh, humanitarian open street map. Uh, and um, missing maps particularly contributes to this where they get people, volunteers together to map certain areas. Now this is where map swipe comes in. So as you can see there, it, it basically allows people to um, create heat maps by telling mappers where to go. At this point, we don't necessarily allow people to actually put in the house or draw the road. It simply allows us to tell mappers where to map their most um, significant areas. And this is kind of how it works. So this is kind of a result from MapSwipe, where we basically say, hey, here's where you need to look, and here's what we see. And you know, the, the really good upside of that is that you actually can tell, more or less. You can see road networks, as I previously shown. And you can, sh you can see population areas uh, already from the maps we create. But the real magic happens when we take these areas and we turn it into tasks for, um, for OpenStreetMap. And so it basically looks like this. And it looks like the colors don't fully go through. But basically, um, y you have yes, and then unreliable and bad imagery. And it turns it into this aggregated result. And then that turns into maps that mappers can go and map and actually can put the houses and draw the roads um, while people are using the heat map that MapSwipe already provided. The future of where we're headed is actually um, is immediate disaster response. So if there's a disaster, we can ask people to classify certain areas in a map. 
um, such as you know, find helipaths after the Nepal earthquake. Um, we believe that mobile mapping can replace computer-based mapping. So we believe that people, can, people will be able to uh, draw roads much faster and draw houses and whatever is needed through their mobile phone. And they're more likely to do it that way and in a more efficient way than if they also have to go to their computer and map that way. Um, we are going to train neural networks on the, which is AI. Um, so basically, we can train neural networks on the results that we already provide, which are, um, they're kind of different per, per area. So, you know, a village in Nepal might look very different than a village in Myanmar. So you can't necessarily use the same models everywhere. So we want to create models based on, on we wanted to create uh, AI models based on the results that we're getting and use it to keep those areas updated automatically and then have people sort of verify those results. Um, and as of three days ago, organizations can now deploy their own version of MapSwipe because it's completely free and open source at github.com slash MapSwipe. So um, this is what you can do. You can, you can, you can fully, this, you can create your own version and um, have people basically empower your own communities and, and have your own volunteers to work on these projects. And it's completely free, open source. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Uh, or the website for MapSwipe itself, which you guys can download and contribute to actual humanitarian work by Dr. Stubwaters and the American Red Cross and the Missing Maps Projects are actually putting projects in there that help save lives um, today. And yeah, that's pretty much what I have. If you guys are interested in, in working with us um, and if, or if you have ideas or, or want to contribute to our project in any way, you can reach, this is my email. So if you guys need that for anything, um, yeah, feel free to let me know. And that's all I have. We'll have the panel.